Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much. And thank you all for being here. We know it's half past three now. It's about the end of the day. This, the second day is always very tough because there are too many good evening events. And we as the panel are very grateful for having a full audience. And we also have two wishes for, uh, that we would like to impose to you. Number one, our personal goal as a team is that you do not check your emails for the next hour because you think it's going to be very interesting. And the second thing, you only go on Facebook to post a picture and saying great panel and then the respective hashtags. Then all of these gentlemen, including myself, would be very happy. Also allow me for the introduction of slides that we did something and we say, okay, you're all experts, otherwise you wouldn't come to that panel, not at that time, not at that day. Technology drove a lot of change if we look into distribution technology. And the main impacts of that were a lot of increase in velocity or speed and transparency. Since my mom got an iPad, she knows all the prices on all the channels. And it's way beyond the click and search mentality, as we all know. Now, the problem with that, it's evolving so fast, and we as hoteliers are still in quite a traditional business. And we worry about many things, some of them that you see right here at the, at the screen behind me. But while we are worried about increased cost of distribution, like, oh my god, Booking.com is now 50-something percent of my online market share, like Airbnb is actually taking my guests away, all these kind of things, Technology as such is actually in a completely different stage. The things that we saw already now on this fair and on many of the panels and presentations and announcements are actually five years much more advanced to what we actually discuss as the hot topics, as we sometimes call it in conferences. Now, the problem with this is and the gentlemen here will be experts on that. What is being disclosed on ITB is not like the state of the art, which is in the secret drawer of the development and R&D teams. This is already today's reality. So if we are five years behind reality and R&D is five years in front of it, we're 10 years behind. And that drives a little thing. I just put two questions up that we would like to look into. The first one, and we'll investigate that later on with Tom Breckwell from TripAdvisor. Is TripAdvisor now an OTA? And looking into the publications and TripAdvisor own material, the answer is uh, no, yes, no, no, yes, 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 no, yes, yes. And uh, probably we'll get an answer from Tom today that we can trust because he's a trustful man with the right logo right here on stage. The second thing, and I do have to admit, when we did this presentation, we actually also were trying to get, or we were actually expecting Peter Verhoeven from Booking.com on stage. Unfortunately, a secret sickness has kind of caught Peter uh, right after the announcement with Accor. I don't know whether, uh, probably it's just a coincidence, but this sickness also has led to a case that nobody at TripAdvisor, there must be a lot of ill people at this stage, our best regards, we hope you get well soon. So many people are sick at Booking.com that nobody could kind of replace Peter. So please forgive me that this slide is just on one side because we've got Brennan Wynn here from Sabre. And the question was, are Booking.com and Sabre actually competitors? And most of you who are our age would say no, because Sabre is a GDS and Booking.com is an OTA. But if we look at recent Sabre portfolio against recent Booking.com portfolio, we see quite an overlap. Unfortunately, we cannot answer this question to the full extent, but we will give you a vote later on as well. And while I'm here, I just wanted to say, since this is an afternoon session, a late afternoon session, if we look at this, we shouldn't take it too serious. We should think of our industry like this beautiful computer game, which is a couple of years older than I actually am, Pac-Man. Just a quick quote, who of you has ever come across Pac-Man? Thank you very much. I'm lecturing at a couple of universities. This is usually a test to see whether the audience is still awake. You are. So Pac-Man is actually a great thing because Pac-Man teaches us so many things. We are this little chap and we're trying to get all of these coins or guests or revenues while these ghosts, which could be fast developments, are trying to catch us. And we know from Pac-Man, every year or every level, it gets faster. And the problem sometimes today 
we feel a bit like this. <laughs> Surrounded by too many things to handle it all. And we hope today to give you a couple of insights from the experts on the panel. I'm just the moderator, I'm a shy country boy. But I'm very happy to have these gentlemen, which I would like to introduce to you. We've got Tom Breckwald. <laughs> Oh, sorry, there you are. We've got Tom Breckwald, as I said, from TripAdvisor. Please give a small applause to Prom. Okay. We've got Bren Wynn as well from Sabre. He is in charge of EMEA. Vasilis Siropoulos, who is the founder and director of UU Analytics. And Vasilis, this is probably the biggest applause that a Greek person got in Germany in the past few months. Very good. Well. Thank you very much. And last not least, we always call him the Grand Seigneur of Hotel Distribution, Luis Del Olmo, who used to be with Melia, who is now with Ediso Systems. Please give a big hand to Luis as well. As this is an interactive session, you have learned that, you've raised one arm. You've clapped your hands. You're also allowed to ask questions towards the end of the session. If there is a question that you cannot hold back, that is really striking you, like lightning in this room, lift an arm. If we don't see you, just stand up. If we still don't see you, lift two arms, start dancing, do something wild, and we will then try to get a mic to you, although this is not within the very well organized, people always think from Switzerland, the plot of the thing. But if there's a striking question, don't be shy, stand up. You're amongst friends and some other people. So let me ask you and just start with an introduction round. And uh, I'd like to start with you, Luis. We've seen a lot of developments from your perspective. First, tell us what is the perspective as a representative of Ediso, and then what do you think is the next big trend that we have to that we will experience? It's a big question. Um, well, first, maybe. I'm probably the oldest and the most traditional still with a tie. Also, I've moved into technology, so I should have taken off my tie. But as you have asked me to talk about hotels and see the relationship to technology, let me tell you, even with my age, what I felt over the last 15 years is that we are really, at least as a hotelier, not in an evolution anymore. We are in a real revolution. I've come to call it actually a tsunami. It's really hit us. I mean, hoteliers, we've done well. You know, we, we claim it's bad and this and that, but we haven't really been very scientific. I still remember the NCR 42, and you probably are some of my co uh, age in, in the room. I mean, this was a machine that made a hell of a lot of money, noise, in order to check in somebody. We have gone from that into what we thought an incredible computer age. So we could do away with that noise and do our administration. But suddenly we've realized that the consumer is far more important than that administration that backs it up, which is very important. And it's taken us a long time to understand how to handle the, uh, that consumer. Nowadays, I do realize that we are in the digital consumer. And this only in 15 years' time. And I think, and this is our perspective, if I may, from a Melia standpoint, we did create Ediso after changing the whole platform, technological platform of the company in the year 2000. And by changing uh, that platform, we obviously spent a hell of a lot of money and invested into the future to be close to that digital world. And then realized that we are hoteliers. So we were not going to keep investing to the tune of five million every year to make that performing a platform. So that's when we decided to basically create a joint venture. And they said, well, you spent so much money, Louis, on this thing. You better get the money back. So that's why they moved me back into a diesel. And that's the position today. So we do believe that, yes, technology is very important. And not only that important is that Because the consumer is the one who decides the way he's going to buy or consume, we need to be in touch with him every second to be able to be represented as a brand or as an individual hotel in the face of that consumer at the moment when he purchases. Wow. Thank you very much. 
Now, following the technology road, Vasilis, what do you think is going to hit us within the next 24 months? Well, I think actually that there's two things. One thing is that the consolidation will continue, whether it's in terms of brands, in terms of distribution partners, or within uh, also tech companies. So that will continue, and that's not very good news for the hoteliers, because that will uh, mean that the distribution costs will continue rising. Uh, that's, that's for sure in the next 12 to 24 months. Uh, what we thought was a high dis distribution cost today and high acquisition cost, I think we haven't seen everything uh, yet. So that's probably one of the things uh, that, that we continue accelerating. Mm -hmm. Wow. Who of you, may I ask, just hands up again, who of you is actually from the hotel supplier side, running a hotel or working with hotels? Just a quick hands up. Okay. Who of you has budgeted for that to happen? Hands up again. Okay, we might have to a little gap here. Thank you very much. <laughs> Leading over to you, Brandon. I mean, of course, at Sabre, we saw you basically deliver more or less everything we need right here, more or less. What do you see happening in the next 24 months? Um, <clears throat> well, I think we, first of all, I don't think we ever stop innovating. So we, we should always be challenging ourselves to find what that next step is. What I would say is um, we spend a lot of time listening to our customers, so hoteliers, um, and listening to what it is that they want to be spending their time doing. So we try and solve the problem of taking things that aren't their regular day-to-day -day business and simplifying those. One of those is how do we stay in touch with that consumer? I think one of the big trends that's out there now is mobile. So I need to be in touch with can end consumers on any device that's out there at all times. So I need to start having as a channel, mobile has got to be something I'm focused on. And then I think over the last few years, um, big data has been the, the talk, right? Everyone has talked about big data, big data. And I think in some cases, there's even some hoteliers who are advanced enough to say, yeah, I have some big data it's sitting in my cupboard over here and it looks nice and pretty. But I think the challenge over the next 24 months is how do I operationalize that data? So how do I use all of that resource that I've, um, that I've compiled to actually make my guest experience better? And I, I think that's what we're going to start seeing the leaders in the industry do. Okay, thank you very much. Now, coming to a little bit of a different perspective, Tom, uh, TripAdvisor, you are a very fast-moving company. It's hard even for me to keep track. I meet him every couple of weeks, and every time I meet him, he's teaching me something new, which they just <laughs> developed, rolled out, or changed. So what's, what will we see from, from your end, or what do you see as big trends in the next 24 months? Well, from, from a TripAdvisor side, it's, uh, uh, we focused always on the, on the community, um, on the traveler, and we want to give the traveler the best choice uh, they, they're going to have. And we are looking into giving them an additional choice um, in Europe, which is uh, our program called Instant Booking. So the choice of booking on TripAdvisor. Um, we've rolled out this uh, in the US already, and we're uh, about to start to roll this out in Europe as well. And I, uh, this is definitely what will, probably not the next 24 months, but the next couple of months be uh, the big change in our world. Can I ask you, um, because you're doing a lot of things actually for the consumer, so it's kind of consumer-centric, but you get your revenues from the supplier. So uh, who do you consider your customer, the guest the hotelier, the OTA, all of them? Yeah, more or less all of them. As I said, uh, it's always about the choice. And I think if you want to um, attract um, consumers, you need to give them a choice. Um, not every... Not even every uh, traveler has the same um, attention every trip. A business trip, they need different uh, things than when they go on the weekend with their families. So that's why we need to have the full uh, scale of, of opportunities available for a consumer to come back for, for their booking. Now, I was having this naughty slide about is TripAdvisor an OTA, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Now, <laughs> this was just out of any kind of very 
qualitative publications, including your investor relations website. But what's the up-to-date answer for today? Are you an OTA? <laughs> no. Why not? And I'm curious where the yes were coming from at any stage. Anyway, no, I mean, the, uh, the big thing is for us, or the big difference for us, uh, uh, why we say we're not becoming an OTA is because of the uh, technology we put behind there and the logic we put behind there. Yes, from a consumer or a traveler point of view, you make your booking on TripAdvisor. But the difference to an OTA is we're not um, managing this, uh, this booking on our side, but we transfer this booking into either our booking partner's uh, database or to the hotel direct. And if we speak, to, uh, speak about um, uh, Trip Connect instant booking, what is, is, is designed for hotel and hotel chains, that would mean the, uh, the booking is made on TripAdvisor, but the booking is transferred to the hotel booking system. Uh, the hotel will send a um, confirmation direct to the, to the traveler, so they are owning the traveler, they are able to uh, communicate with the traveler for any post, pre, post day communication they want to do. That is the first big, big issue. And the second is the payment. The payment will be done on the hotel side as well, whether it's prepaid, immediate uh, uh, cash for the hotel or uh, on checkout at the reception desk. And that is the main difference um, what uh, differentiates us from an OTA. That is an interesting definition, and I would like to ask you, Luis, um, is that really not an OTA, or is Tom just describing us a retail model OTA from your point of view as a hotelier? I wouldn't dare to contradict Tom, honestly. I mean, this, <laughs> this is a hidden question, but I think Tom clarified it. Yeah? Also, we obviously kind of think of him as a client. Yeah? In many ways, I mean, we first as a hotelier try to be top of his list mm -hmm. because we know that has an impact on our reservations. You know, and it goes back to, is the consumer that buys you? So he helps that consumer, the consumer to make that decision based on his criteria of the experience that he expects. So I'm fine with Tom, I don't want to fight with him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nobody wants to fight with Tom, however, <laughs> Um, since this is an afternoon session, I like to have a little bit of a debate, so I can't let you lose there. <laughs> Brennan, isn't that exactly the same thing? If I use your Direct Connect two-way interface to Booking.com and the retail model, I get the booking directly, I get the customer directly, he pays with me, I get all the data? Well, I mean, I, again, I, I think what it comes down to is the end consumer, right? You, how, where do they want to pay? Where they feel comfortable putting their money, right? At the end of the day, you're filling, you know, filling beds, and that hotelier has made the conscious decision to distribute that inventory via that channel. They can always turn it off. So I'm just realizing TripAdvisor, and especially Tom, is such a beloved company that nobody wants to object, which I totally respect because I like Tom as well. <laughs> However, <laughs> Vasilis, let's rephrase that. Does it play a role? whether TripAdvisor is an OTA or not, or is it just a stupid kind of panel definition? Because at the end, I want the booking. How do you see that? No, I actually disagree. I see TripAdvisor as well as an OTA. Uh, I mean, travel is just one vertical, you know? And everybody wants the same piece of the action, whether it's from search to book to stay to pay eventually, you know, if you think about Apple Pay and whatever Apple is doing. So everybody wants the same, kind of the same vertical, and from that perspective, yes, TripAdvisor would be an OTA as well, because eventually they will go in that direction as well. And whether the technical part is who is paying, who is, where the transaction is happening, uh, well, these are technicalities for me. Uh, that I, that's how I see it. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my revenue manager's hat on and said at the end of the day, I want the booking. That is the number one. The second thing is, of course, I'm looking into what kind of channel it comes through, how much this channel costs, and all of these kind of things. And um, so, is there a difference from a revenue perspective with that new TripAdvisor model? If we look into net ref par, so your ref par minus the cost of distribution, is there a difference in net ref par, Vasilis? I know you're very advanced on that topic. If we compare instant booking, 12% or 15%, with a retail OTA, 12% or 
Well, essentially everything is dynamic, and I think that in the in the hotel industry we are still seeing things a little bit traditional with uh, with the measuring average rate and ref bar. We haven't really made the shift completely into net ref bar. It's really now that we are starting to do that, but you need to manage it on a it's on a micro optimization level. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you look across the whole year. Uh, it's not that, oh, we've made our budget and that's it. Uh, you need to manage it every day and really allocate your marketing uh, spend very, very dynamically to get the best out of it. So it's really about, uh, about getting the booking, but at the lowest possible cost. Whether it comes direct or whether it comes through TripAdvisor or somebody influences <coughs> it or it's booking.com, it should be at the lower cost and that's what you need to do every day. Mm -hmm. So we come to a different perspective then. It means also like, okay, where do you want to put your inventory? Now, Lois, that might give a different perspective to the question because to put your inventory to booking.com to allow them to sell it and to connect your booking engine to TripAdvisor, instant booking, is that a difference that we could use? Yeah. I think as a hotel manager, what I want is to be kind of a driver of one of these Formula Ones, yeah? where they have this steel wheel with a lot of buttons that I don't understand, because I've never really used that car. But it feels like that. I mean, you've got all these channels around you, 365 degrees. And oh gosh, how, how am I going to manage all these inventories? And actually, how am I going to manage my average rate and my return on investment? So, and it's basically being able to have that tool that will make you stronger or not or, or weaker in your revenue management strategy and your yield strategy. And I would wonder this hotelier a system that does that for me. And I've seen a lot of hoteliers and very little hands that said we invested in this. Well, the truth is, I don't think you need to invest. Give it to some people that have constructed that technology and they will keep investing in that technology and then use their facility in order to respond with your strategy to, con to the consumer. Um, with whoever you do that. But technology is not the differentiation factor. Okay. Technology helps you to get there. Let me try to put that into a, provoc a provocative question. Most of you have come across the fact that our friends at Booking.com, despite the fact not being here today, uh, because they're all sick, is that they have launched a couple of things which were beyond the actual OTA model, like what we saw before, um, Boutique, which is now Booking.com Hotel Solutions, so they build your website. They integrate a booking engine, kind of free of charge or a little, little fee. Or, uh, that's how I, I read the marketing uh, material. And actually, they do exactly what you say. They say, guys, we are, well, no, I have to rephrase that, sorry, because nobody from Booking, is anybody from Booking.com in the room? <laughs> okay, so let me rephrase it then in a more careful Swiss way. So basically, um, Booking.com would say, guys, you're the host of years, you know us, we're 50% of your online market share. Why are we 50% of your online market share? Because nobody can do it as good as we do. I'm just assuming. And, the, and because we are so good in doing what we do, and because we are your biggest friend on that planet, what we actually want to do is we will help you, instead of doing your own website and doing your booking engine and plugging that all together, just take everything from us. Is, is that the kind of strategy that you would impose? I like that fight. <laughs> um, the answer is obviously no. As a hotelier, I want to keep control of what my future is going to be. It is not an easy one. Again, we have not been scientific over the past, so therefore we need a lot to catch up to change our minds. We need to become more analysts. We need to be more what we were saying about yield management. Um, I don't want to be dependent on any of the distribution channels. Um, I want basically to be able to choose where I'm going to put that extra room and where I'm going to get that extra revenue at any time, any second of my life. And obviously you need some you know, very strong technology to do that. But then our defense, our eventual defense is to know the customer. We need to have the customer at the center of our daily thoughts. And we said something about big data. I've told a lot of people, forget big data, start having small data. 
take care of your small data. How many thousands of customers have we had in the hotels over the last 20 years? We don't know anything about them. What a pity. That might, depending on the size of your hotel, be thousands and thousands and thousands of customers that have experienced you and probably were happy. And they'll tell you that in TripAdvisor. But you've never done anything to really make them loyal customers. So if we have one arm that will help us through this kind of battle is think and earn your customer. So start thinking about how you're going to invest to make sure that obviously you satisfy the customer, but that you keep them. The only way that TripAdvisor is not an OTA, OTA. But the only way that you're going to manage that cost, intermediary cost, is by keeping in touch with the customer. Because the millennial, the one that is now about 18, 20 years old, will, might have another way to buy and be actually more influenced by social entourage than by any other influence that we think we have today. Okay. Now, before we dig deeper into that, knowing your customer, I've got a question to the panel, and we discussed it, but I phrased it like, now we got the big guys on the scene, and we got Priceline slash Booking.com. Who is going to be the Priceline killer, or the Expedia killer, or the joining the big five, or however you want to phrase this, but who is going to join the scene? Is it going to be from the East? Is it going to be from a different kind of field? Who would you see there, Vasilis? Um, I'd say it's the operating platforms. So I would say everything which is kind of Android based, iOS based. I mean, if you go back to the millennials, for example, take for example Google Maps. If you search for a location on Google Maps, I want to go from here to let's say Potsdamer Platz, um, you get like you can go by bike, by foot, or, or by bus, and then you also get, for example, an ad from Uber, which is not taken Uber, and then you can directly from Google Maps just just book it, you know. So that is app driven that advertisement, and that is very good for the millennial customer because it's not intrusive. So I would say that pretty much the Apples and the Googles, these are the ones that are going to be uh, to be uh, to be the ones that will. Possibly, maybe not take over, but not, not maybe kill. Uh, but I mean, they will be a very, very serious player. And also in market power, I mean, they're quite up there. Okay. Are we excited because of the market power or because of the invention power? Or both? Both. 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 Okay. You agree to that, Louis? Yeah, definitely. Innovate, innovate, innovate. And there are obviously some players that are faster and have more capacity to do that. But the key word from here to the next 10 years is think of innovate. Yeah? Now, Clear. you are an innovator at Sabre. Have you increased your R&D team? Uh, so I, we invest significantly every year in our platform. And so, you know, uh, for the exact reason that, that you had pointed out, you know, hoteliers, uh, you had done it once in 2005, and or in 2000, you had said, and then you realized that, wait a minute, hold on, we're not going to have be able to keep this, sustaining this, right? So uh, we're constantly innovating, um, and our process is 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 exactly around sort of that end consumer. It's listening to our customers and then listening to what the marketplace is asking for. So how are millennials shopping, right? And so we, we spend that time looking at that. Uh, everything from user interface all the way up to um, integration between systems. Which, whichever way you can uh, effectively take the time away from non-revenue generating tasks, uh, for us, we, we consider that innovation. So it might, in, in some cases, it might not even be things that an end consumer would see. Mm -hmm. But there are, uh, there's a lot of innovation going on constantly. Uh, so yeah, I would, I would say. So are you going to be the Priceline killer? Because we saw the Godzilla slide, which was very scientific, I admit. <laughs> um, no, actually, I don't. In fact, I think, I, I think there's an absolute place for yeah. Priceline. There's a place for Booking.com. I think the real question is, the end consumer is not necessarily going to be the killer of it, but the end consumer is going to be the one that optimizes the mix across hoteliers. I think all the hoteliers will say, I, I need to have that channel, right? Because that's how consumers are buying. 
my question would be, and we just talked about this before, is am I, do I have the optimum mix? Am I investing in the right channels in order to ensure that my mix is not completely dependent on one of those channels? Forget it whether it's even Priceline. Mm -hmm. um, you, if, if you were to flip-flop it the other way and say, I, my goal is to have 100% of my volume just through my website, I think you're, you're wrong. You, you're missing out on opportunity if you don't have a mix across all of those different channels. So I think the, the end consumer is the one that effectively will, will decide the power of a price line or a, any particular channel at that point. Let me put that into a concrete thing, because I've heard end consumer now quite a couple of times, and that it's very important that it's consumer centric and so on. If I go to TripAdvisor, 100 years back, I clicked on a login with Facebook button. And since I did that, except sometimes when I clean my memory, but ex since that time, when I clicked on the login with Facebook button, some clever cookie will always greet me as Hello Wilhelm on the top of the page of TripAdvisor. So TripAdvisor knows me before I even start the booking process. If I go on guest-centric booking engine, will we get a login with Facebook button or how will you try to recognize who's actually booking before we enter at the last or second last step before in front of the confirmation, our name? Well, so I've, some we have some hoteliers that do utilize widgets and things like that. They, they do that. Um, some hoteliers are, have their loyalty program where they do have their own login at the top and, and you do get that. There are um, strategies around digital that put cookies out there so that you can start uh, serving up ads specific to you know dates that you hmm. shopped. If uh, you've got a cookie on your PC or your device um, that knows you shopped February 12th through 15th, you probably are realizing that's around Valentine's Day. Maybe you can serve up specific ads that are around Valentine's Day, right? So there's, there's a lot of different ways to do it beyond even just what's my name. I can look at some of the things that you've been doing, some of your activity. And that, all that technology exists today. It's more a question of how advanced are we in operationalizing the information that's accessible to us. I like the Valentine's Day thing, and allow me to dig a bit deeper into Valentine's Day, although it's over, but it's IT, and IT is a romantic topic, as we all know. So um, does that mean that if I log in with Facebook, and my relationship status is single, you will not display a Valentine's package to bother me? All right. All because right. I hate the day already? It's coming. <laughs> it is coming. That's our next stage. I mean, remarketing obviously is something that is very used now. And we're, we're getting, even as a consumer, getting tired. All these things come so, so quick and we get kind of submerged. And that's why the machine is innovating constantly for new models so that they keep your attention. So what you just said is coming. You will be able at a certain moment to identify the psychographic the, the target group at which you want to talk. So this is the next stage. Maybe we're not all prepared for it, but it is coming. People are working out there to make that happen. To be honest, that was my only disappointment with TripAdvisor because I thought it was already there because every time I was logging into TripAdvisor, I've clicked I like surfing and sailing and beach about a hundred times in different groups. And every time I saw this beautiful picture of the island with the ocean, it was really tempting to go there on holiday. And I thought you guys did that because I love surfing and sea and life. And then I realized today when we were at the TripAdvisor booth, somebody called Martina was logged in and she had my picture. Yeah. <laughs> because she likes surfing. And <laughs> you want to meet her? <laughs> Might be a match. Anyway. This is being streamed. I can't answer the question. <laughs> no, but, um, no, but I mean, huh? the thing is about, I mean, we, we, we're still looking at, into, into a, a, or a desktop world, and then we're moving into a, a mobile world. And very fast in the US, we see that more digital, digital data was picked up by a, a mobile device. Um, so there needs to be a, a innovation in terms of how do I deliver 
uh, data and, and how uh, relevant this data is um, to me because you will not have your big screen anymore to, to search between relevant and non-relevant. So uh, you need to um, have very relevant data um, and I think going forward you will even see that you don't need to be active anymore to consume that because uh, wearable technologies, you know, a watch, uh, whatever you, you, you were to get that will passively tell you all the information you want to see, whether you don't need to run around like that anymore to find your way to, uh, to Potsdamer Platz. Uh, it will guide you and it will tell you that you just passed by uh, the Brandenburger Tor and, and what happened to it, etc. So um, that is where the future lies. Okay. Now, a lot of the things that we talk about, like consumer-centric, having personalized offers and these kind of things, it sounds to me familiar if I compare it to retail. Now, we're all kind of watching a bit into Amazon. Will Amazon build the next great consumer-centric booking platform because they know retail, they know how to handle data? Is that a, is that a threat? Is that something good for us as hoteliers? I think, again, like we mentioned there's space for everybody. I mean, we. At least in, in some of the countries in Europe, we have big department stores that have travel agencies offline. So it suddenly comes Amazon and will become a global, you know, uh, I would say sh shopping center that includes travel. So do they have an advantage? Again, I mean, their database is humongous. Their knowledge about their consumers is humongous, but so does Google and so does TripAdvisor. And so, so everybody will have to go and turn their activity at massaging those databases in a different way. So will they become more? I mean, it's like the Airbnb question is that are they a competitor to hotels? Of course. Are they attracting new consumers? I think so. There are people that like to be in an apartment instead of one single bedroom in the center of New York. So we will have to gauge. The world tells us that travel is increasing. So if we believe those figures, there must be a space for everybody. So should I put my, no, that was a sharing economy question, but just because you are, um, should, should I put, if you say, they bring, Airbnb brings new customers, should I then take these new business models and say like, should I as a hotel, you put part of my inventory there, maybe? Well, we have an example in Spain, actually. There is a hotelier that has gone into an Airbnb model. And I said, hey, the model of a room is a model of an apartment. I clean the rooms, I can clean an apartment. So, and he's going for it. So again, invention, innovation, creativity, that's what we've been living in the last 10 years. What is happening is we get the surprise every single month. So we need to get ready for that. That's where innovation is gonna come from. If you go to Palo Alto, you know, it's not only Google. There is a thousands of clever people working on a lot of new, new systems. So you, we need to open up to a whole range of new things coming. So Luis, talking about thousands of people, that of course obviously brings us to billions of people and that of course brings us to China. Okay, I'll well, try to build the bridge. And the, so my question with Cities is, um, we have a login with Facebook button. Should we also place a login with Alibaba account button? Yeah, why not? I mean, let's integrate everything. Let's make it more complicated. <laughs> Have you got an integration with Alibaba already at Sabre in some secret drawer that you might open? Secret drawer? I, uh, I will say that we have uh, the largest amount of direct connections that are out there. And if, if our hoteliers are saying that that's where they want to be you know, driving volume, yeah, we're going we're gonna to go out there and we're going to build that connection. Okay. Um, no? So it's it, it, again, it's a market. If you can't, you can't ignore the market. It's absolutely going to be there. I think what we have to do is you have to justify the resources to bring those markets to you. So you, it's it's a question of prioritization based on what our hoteliers are, are telling us to do and where the volumes are. So if I'd be Chinese and I go to TripAdvisor, I can log in with Alibaba. Never tried it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, I mean, I, I, when I came here to, to Berlin, I, I read an article or a number um, in a German magazine which impressed me. It was like last year we had 1.138 billion travelers in the world, and the biggest group was uh, Chinese, um, 109 million out of these travelers. So definitely we need to uh, look at 
uh, them traveling, uh, but also look at what are their behaviors, what, how do they consume um, uh, content, how do they like to book. We see, for example, that a, uh, the new markets coming into travel, they not only want to see a review, they want to see that a hotel responds on a review and shows that they care for their travelers, that they understand and listen to their needs or their, the issues other travelers may have seen. So we need to look at every different um, uh, yeah, consumer and see what are their, their needs and, and, and try to um, serve them as, as best as we can. Otherwise, they, these 109 million people will, will look for a different um, partner that, that supports their needs and, mm -hmm. and that is uh, <coughs> why we will probably never end up with one big or one small or uh, with, with only one solution because you have uh, so many different needs and, and, and points of views that you need to adapt to that. Okay. So thank you very much until here. And as I'm... Oh yeah, fantastic. Because I just want to say, as I see the audience consuming our little talks, I would love to open up the panel. I, I see somebody is raising an arm right there. Can we get a microphone to the gentleman? Or can you come to the middle? There is a microphone right here. And maybe before you ask the question, you can introduce yourself just with your name and uh, where you're from. Uh, Ian Taylor from uh, Travel Weekly in London. It's a question uh, principally for Tom, but I'm also interested in what the other panelists think. So it, what does TripAdvisor receive from hotels in return for facilitating a booking? Because if there's a payment, a fee or a commission, then you are an agent. And the question is not an academic one, just are you an agent, are you not, not an agent, it doesn't matter. Agency is a legal term, certainly in some jurisdictions, it is in the UK for example, and agent or the equivalent of agent will form part of the package travel directive which is just being revised by the European uh, C Commission and can bring uh, liabilities and, and so on uh, as well as, as tax. So. Do you receive some sort of payment from the hotels for facilitating the booking? Yes, we do. We, we receive a, a commission, um, but we believe that there's a, a, a clear line in between who is a uh, merchant of record and who is not. Um, so we do receive a commission, which, uh, however, doesn't mean uh, that ties into, into uh, direct tax and legal aspects. Okay, so yes, there is a commission, but no, we're not an agency. That is the... Okay. Any other questions from the audience? Because... Oh, yes, please. And by the way, can you give a little applause so some other people would feel motivated? <laughs> Thank you very much. You're the best audience of today past 3 p.m. <laughs> My name is Atala, I'm from Frankfurt, and I have a question for uh, TripAdvisor. Oui. As far as I understood that you are taking a commission from 12 to 15 percent, and then for that you are uh, passing the booking or the inquiry to the website of the client, of the hotelier, or to an OTA. Is that right? Well, not to, not to the website, straight into the uh, management system of the, uh, the hotel. Only the hotel? The hotel or the OTA, depends on okay. which, which partners have signed up Wait, for instant booking. All right, which means that the hotel at the end, if the booking goes to the OTA, then it's going to pay double commission. 15 for you and 15. No, 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 no. If, it, it depends which partner is behind that. So if it goes to a booking partner, the booking partner is paying the commission. If it goes to the hotel, the hotel is paying the commission. There's no double payment for the hotel. So that means I only pay 15% and then you divide it between, between you and the OTA if there is an OTA in, in between? Yes, you, can, you have a certain amount of traffic you, uh, we guarantee you to get. Uh, depending on, on how many partners bid for this traffic on, on instant booking, um, you receive a minimum of 25, 50 or even 100% of this traffic. Yeah. So basically, if I understood it correctly, your question was, am I paying the commission twice? And if I understood you correctly, the answer Clearly was no. you're either paying commission to the OTA or you're paying some kind of transaction fee to Correct. TripAdvisor. So if you as a hotel 
bid for the instant booking and you win the auction on, uh, and get this booking straight to your uh, hotel system, then you pay uh, TripAdvisor. If the, uh, if the OTA gets the booking, you, the, it is a clear booking through the OTA into your hotel and process as normally as, as this OTA booking. Okay, so it's only once. Then. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Do you have also another system uh, uh, doing by, by paying by click? The CPC model, yes, correct. So you, you, you are now, uh, in that case, you are in competition with the AdWords. We give a choice. That's what I what I meant in the beginning. We we have we have three three different models how you can receive traffic or, or, or bookings or um, uh, yeah bookings from from TripAdvisor. One is is our called business listing where we direct the traveler directly to the website or the booking engine of the hotel. Um, then we have TripConnect uh, CPC. This is uh, where we pull live rate and availability um, and, and display that and, and transfer the consumer uh, to that site they, they, they click on. And uh, in future, thirdly, um, TripConnect Instant Booking, where the booking, the, the consumer will stay on TripAdvisor to process the booking and we will then transfer the booking to the hotel or the booking partner. Mm -hmm. Okay. So three different models, but we will all keep all three on the side. So we want to give the choice. The, the traveler can decide which way they want to go, which is their preferred way of booking, um, and uh, that is how we look at it. I see. Okay. Well, so, just give me a, yeah? just a last comment. Okay, the last one. Yes. <laughs> Will this mean that between the hotel and the client is a jungle, and then in that case, it's another one inside. It's a something more. The jungle is becoming much bigger. And as, bad, as much as the jungle becomes bigger, as much as you lose money in between. Well, maybe I can, maybe I may take this up. First of all, thank you very much. And uh, because, as you know, we wanted to engage you as the audience. And if you know this format of these conferences, we always have a TED question. And the TED question is actually just a rephrase of what you asked right now. Because the TED question is, and before we ask it, can you please just look at your seat? You've got this little thing which looks like a calculator. Fantastic. Now it's going to be very simple. Everyone gets one. Take it in your hand right now. <laughs> and let me introduce the question to you because the question has to do with the increased complexity. The question is, will the hotel industry manage to generate the majority of its booking by itself in the future? And please, one means yes and two means no. Don't click now. Will the hotel industry manage the majority of its booking by itself in the future? Please click now. Oh, wow. And the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So thank you very much. First of all, give yourself a big applause. This means basically 74% of everybody here in this room believes that we will not get the majority of our bookings ourselves. However, an encouraging 26% are very, very confident, probably about their own direct booking channels, that we will get the majority of its booking by itself. And before I pass that on to the Panel, please allow me to express why I'm so excited about this. I'm excited about this not because only because of the nice music. <laughs> that was an exciting moment, but not only. I'm excited about this because if we look today from a revenue management perspective into the business mix of hotels, and we do not only look into online business, we look into where do we get our business from, we see the majority of bookings coming directly. And would you actually say that you feel that this is going to change in the future in a drastic way? Luis, would you see these numbers in Melia? I'm quite old. I don't know when the, you know. <laughs> but uh, there is a wish and I can answer to that. I think all the hoteliers that are sitting here wish that that was possible. And the I can is a little bit more difficult. That would be, I mean, if I were in a business, 
that would be what I would like to do, is be in control of my business. How far are we going to be able to be independent from the former intermediaries or the new intermediaries? That's difficult to guess. Now, is that really important? No. Because, you know, this is the question of price. What is a price? That's what the consumer wants to pay. And the price includes all the costs that it goes with it. So if you are able to managing what Facili does, your yield correctly, does it really matter? You know, if the consumer is ready to pay all of that, plus the cost, and that is a good return on investment, why bother about that question? I'm just taking that on to Vasilis. You mentioned at the beginning that you believe that the trend is going to be that the cost of distribution will continue to rise. Now, the audience believes that 74% will be non-direct bookings, which means there is a cost of distribution involved, which is usually a bit higher than just a technology fee. Do you think it's a scary number, or doesn't it surprise you? No, it doesn't surprise me. This is, uh, this is true. Well, I'm happy we have 26% optimists in the room, otherwise, you know, <laughs> it's all doom and gloom, but um, definitely not surprising, of course. Fantastic. Brandon, looking at that number, does that reflect the, the strategy, the distribution mix you offer at Sabre as well? Um, I, I think, does that reflect the strategy? I think that reflects the reality. Uh, I think that's important. Uh, you, you began the panel uh, showing your game of Pac-Man, so whether it's Space Invaders or Pac-Man, whatever it is, one thing's for certain is that if as hoteliers you don't move your little Pac-Man or your, your shooting guy, what have you, um, you're gonna lose, right? It is, something's gonna catch you. So I, I think here is, embracing the reality that you probably are not going to necessarily have, majority means over 50%, right? I think uh, that most of my customers will tell you the healthy mix is not necessarily gonna be the majority. So um, that doesn't surprise me, but I, I do think that it indicates reality. Okay, thank you very much. Tom, this is an encouraging figure for your instant booking product, isn't it? No, I think, I, think, I mean, I was on, on property, I was a hotelier myself uh, for some time and at that stage hotels try to be a family friendly, business friendly, uh, bus tourism friendly, individual friendly hotel all in one. They, they could do big groups and small groups and everything. And that is a bit of the mentality of, of hoteliers, I guess, uh, it's, uh, and you see here. They want to be a professional uh, operation, hotel operation uh, company and they want to be a professional uh, distributor and the question is can they really do that um, I think there's a reason that uh, Priceline is not operating hotels themselves um, so let's focus on, on, on your, your core business be good in that and, and maybe we need to get to the stage where uh, hotels need to uh, make peace with their distribution partners um, agree with them that there is a cost to bring the customer uh, to, to their property and concentrate on operating and, and making, making this uh, customer as happy as possible because this customer probably comes back the next time and doesn't need to look for a different hotel for the next day. Thank you very much. So I just want to bring the entire session back to where it actually started, Pac-Man. <clears throat> the highest level I ever reached in my former life and up to now was level 84. That was when mom switched off the computer and said, go to bed. Now, today we are on level 2015. And as we know, speed is increasing, complexity is increasing with every level. But there's also one thing, and I'd like to thank the panel and you as the audience, about being optimistic. Because the thing with Pac-Man, despite the fact that the speed is increasing, you have fun. It's getting more difficult, you have fun. It's like in sports, it's getting tougher and you like that. And this is the kind of thing we definitely had fun here on stage. I hope you enjoyed the session as well. Thank you very much and please give a big applause to the audience. Thank you.